What's going on YouTube? Bowden the Great bringing another tutorial video specifically regarding combat in Lens Island. Um, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to support my channel. I always appreciate it. Um, but kicking this off, the first thing that's sort of, I'm going to start with the weapons and then kind of segue more into the actual combat itself um, and then go into the actual caverns. Um, but starting off, you know, some people may not know that each weapon sort of has its own sort of different, has its own different perks. Um, kind of just down here in my toolbar, I've got kind of the three more kind of starter, at least two starterish weapons. Um, the Bowie knife is what you start with. Um, I, I prefer personally the high speed weapons, which generally has a little bit lower knockback, but which is okay to me. Um, but that's some people may prefer, you know, a hammer, which is about slower of a speed or a spear. Um, but I prefer the more high speed weapons just because you can, you know, hack and slash and get out of there faster. So I, I think that you can take a little bit less damage um, with that. But kind of the starting off, um, you start off with, with, the, with the Bowie knife. And I recommend, I actually do, do a, a, I did a previous video on this and where to find the Marlin sword. But I recommend because it's free and easy to get. So right out the gate, all you can do, you can just grab that Marlin sword, uh, sword from Lonely Island, and you're pretty much set off. I mean, I I used the, the, the Marlin for quite a, a good bit of time, and then I recently actually just bought um, the Sabarg, which is the pirate sword, Saber. Um, in my opinion, it's sort of a bit, it's kind of a, you know, an upgrade-ish from the Marlin, but really, you know, you have kind of two different avenues on getting new gear, which is unlocking it via or I guess crafting it which which unlocks it for you permanently or you can go into town and actually buy uh, buy weapons from them um, so whatever you know you choose to do I, I, I certainly recommend you know kind of right out the gate you definitely want to have the Marlin and then kind of from there whether or not you prefer the faster attack type either going that route or if you prefer the slower you can go with something like the you know the hammer um, I don't have all the upgrades available yet, but it's it's really sort of the general same idea moving forward. This brings us to my next point, and I'll actually head on over to the to the cavern to demonstrate this one. Equip your shield, or just equip a shield in general, um, after you unlock it. And the biggest reason for that, besides the fact that you can block and negate damage, let's see if our friendly little guy here can help us. Generally, these guys hit for seven damage. You can see right there, actually, sorry, it's eight damage, but the shield negates minus one. You can see that whenever it will ever hit me. Oh my god, come on, buddy. There you go. Well, actually, yeah, five. So that, so, but regardless, your shield negates for one damage. And as you upgrade your shield, it'll, it'll negate more and more damage. But even whenever you're blocking, yeah, see, look, you, you only take, your shield absorbs, you know, four to five uh, damage, which, yeah, you can see passive uh, passive blocking 15% damage, active blocking 60%. So definitely, 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 even if you choose to just not block, definitely just equip it and just have it in your offhand. Um, it is kind of a pain in the ass, especially as you get deeper into the cave and things are darker. Um, you know, it, it, it does kind of get to be a hassle because you can't see shit, but you can just always put it in your in your hot bar, especially once you get your second or your first bag upgrade which will give you additional um, hot bar spot you can easily just toss that in there the next aspect of weapons that i want to touch on um, that i didn't really touch on in the first part is the special attacks that you've got you know the bowie knife don't, nothing really to say there because it doesn't have any special attacks but if you look at the marlin you see down here in the blue that's your special attacks that you've got for this for this sword so this one's got that one, and then the whirlwind type attack. So the dash, and then the whirlwind type attack. The Sabarg only has, only has the whirlwind attack, or what I'm calling whirlwind at least. Um, but basically, you want to learn whatever weapon style you choose, whether that's fast or slow or just average. You want to learn your specials and how to utilize that, and make sure that you're hitting crits because hit because crits you can do you know, double to three times as much damage as you would normally. And so the best way to really, obviously, to defeat your enemies is to do more damage. Not that I need to tell anyone that, but, you know, you want to make sure that your timing is, is right and that you are, you know, comboing off of, even if you lead in there and use your special outright, you want to combo your attacks off that special 
and and crit because that's that's where your the majority of your damage is going to come from and how you're going to kill your enemies faster. So this kind of brings me to my next point um, about dealing with enemies. You'll notice that they are these little spawn points, and I'm just doing it on this little one because you can get quickly overwhelmed on the on the larger ones. But you'll notice that on the spawn points that these guys will just spawn relentlessly. So the one thing that you really want to do, or at least at least how I play this, is to draw to draw these guys away. At least like especially the bigger guys. These guys aren't as that bad, but when they group up and they start hitting you, they will kill you very quickly. But draw these guys away and then just move in quickly, and then just push everything that you you've got out at that uh, spawn point and try and just destroy it as quickly as possible. Because like I was saying. If you let this go on for too long, they will amass a bunch of enemies and they will just totally overwhelm you. And once you get into a position, for instance, if you make one wrong mistake and you roll when you're not supposed to and you roll into a group of them and they all hit you at once, I mean, your health is just going to deplete and you still have that cooldown buffer on your roll and you're basically just screwed and you're dead. You're going to lose a bunch of gold and be pissed off. So definitely, and, and I just use this um, spawn point as an example, but you know, later on down the cave, you're going to have, you know, two to three of the of the you know larger tier or medium i guess tier um spawn points just spawning up a bunch of guys and so you you have to deal with that very quickly or you will get overwhelmed like crazy so my next point is rolling rolling is extremely important especially if you want to survive pretty much i mean real realistically speaking say you get you know you somehow have been kind of toying around with the enemies and you did, haven't been destroying the spawns and you have a massive amount, or you're just playing it, you get deep, you have a massive amount. It's really imperative to learn how to roll and you know when to roll out of situations that you know you, ru you run in there, do your attacks, and then roll out. This is, I mean, with, with how this game is designed, you really just want to utilize very guerrilla warfare attacks. Get in there, do your damage, and then get out. Which you, you know... You can kind of time it so that as they jump at you is whenever you, you know, stop moving, turn around, do your special, oh, whoops, do your special, and then kind of do a quick combo, a crit combo, and then just immediately roll out because you know that once they, once they kind of get back to attacking that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to get slapped. And this is my, kind of my favorite tip actually that I did not learn until sort of recently, but you notice right now my health bar is you know decently low. It's at 69. Yeah, buddy. Um, but once you start gathering, you know, a lot of coal because coal is a lot more the more common resource. There's there's some coal right here. A lot more common than iron is. So you'll probably have a lot more coal um, than iron. But basically, you you want to make sure that you're igniting all of these because they can actually heal you. So if you notice, yep, plus five, plus five, all the way up, and you do not have to be full on health either, which is nice. Obviously, if your hunger is all the way down, you're not going to be healing. Um, but, you know, it's nice to be able to have that option so that if you even get overwhelmed by a bunch of enemies and they're like on your ass and you're like, well, I don't have enough food to heal myself, but my hunger is okay, sprint around, find one of these, heal up real quick, and then get back into the action. And you should be good. But yeah, those are a couple, couple of my starter tips that, you know, if, if you're a veteran, this may not really help you out. Um, this is just kind of some things that as I've been playing, um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not into the into like the end, the end game tier yet. Um, but I am, you know, decently through, you know, the er I'm definitely through the early game and, th and through some of the, you know, the middle game. So I do have some idea on, you know, the nuances and the difficulties of, you know, the combat in this game and kind of a learning curve of it. But yeah, I hope you liked uh, my tips, and if they did, please, you know, don't forget to, you know, like the like the video as well as subscribe to my channel to support me. Um, as always, I appreciate it, YouTube. Peace out.